señores y señores, this is Morris, this is Real Nonstop Tennis, hasta las piedras cantan por Telemundo.2. And today we have the multi-talented, the beautiful, amazing, Sylvine. That's right, my people, Catherine Shepard is in Real Nonstop Talent. This is the Rabbi Assassin, Mr. Real Nonstop Talent, hasta las piedras cantan por Telemundo.2. And I've been waiting decades for this interview. Yeah, we're, we're, we're not that long, but we're sort of around that time. Uh, to finally have this ta multi-talented, incredible artist, super beautiful, super powerful voice that to her family and to the people that know her, we know her as Catherine Shepard, but as the project, she's known as Sylvine. Hello. Thank you so much. What an introduction. I feel honored. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you very much for being here. We've been uh, behind trying to get a hold of you for quite a while. So it is an honor to finally have you here. So, Catherine, you know, I've been looking a little bit and you 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 look a little bit not physically. Right. But the way that you work, you remind me of a little bit about the artist named Prince. God rest his soul. Oh. But you're like the <laughs> prince of ambient post metal. And why do I say that? Because for those that know Prince. He sang, he did all his instruments, he coordinated his songs, everything was his vision. And I've seen that that's exactly the way that, that you do music. So what inspired you to, to add, add, you know, at what age did you tell yourself, ah, oh, I can play any, I can play any instrument that my heart desires. At what age did that come to your head? And when did you decide to, let me just learn anything I can, I can do. Well, I, I think there was never really a conscious thing of like, I will try to learn as many instruments as possible. And let me just tell you right away, I'm not like a virtuoso or master at any of them, but I have enough uh, skill level to be able to express my emotions, which is what is the most important to me anyways. But, um, well, I started, I, it's kind of spread out because I, the first instrument I started playing was actually drums because my dad is a drummer. So he used to nice. bring me to rehearsals and like, let me like play around on the drum kits. And after a while it evolved into him actually giving me lessons uh, and then uh, my voice has been kind of the instrument that I've been closest to my whole life. Uh, so that also came into play quite early on. I have like these memories of when I was quite young, like singing for the other kids in school and stuff like that, like during recess and that kind of thing. Uh, and then going through a big period of like not being able to sing for anyone at all, including myself. Uh, oh. But then it came back again. Yeah, I, I was terrified of hearing my own voice even. It was like really weird. Um, but then that can make it back again when I was like a teenager and I started like, this kind of music uh, or like high school for music over here. And um, along the way, I also learned how to play a bit of bass and uh, of course, piano I had as well, which also led me to synthesizers. And then basically the last uh, instrument that I picked up that I'm really using in everyday life is the guitar, which I picked up maybe 10 years ago or so now. Like I actually started really playing it more seriously when I was writing my first album, that's kind of how I learned what to do with this instrument. Before then, I just done like very, very like simple things every now and then, nothing too serious. Um, and basically, the only reason that I wanted to to be the person that's recording as many of the instruments as possible in my project in Sylvain is because um, I wanted to keep it as personal as possible. So I didn't want to sacrifice the quality of the vision, you know, like I have a vision for the music and that's why I started like um, bringing in drummers because my drum skills are not high enough to be able to do what I write actually when I'm writing music. Uh, and I also wanted to stay humble and be like, okay, I'm not going to sacrifice the quality here just to be able to say I did everything. But at the same time, being able to do, um, ha being a multi-instrumentalist now and being able to to play these different kinds of instruments other than the drums uh, completely allows me for a very personal expression. It allows me to not compromise the vision or to, um, you know, have to give away something that's like super personal to someone else and then watch them interpret that, which is what I'm doing live actually, which also works great. But uh, in general, I just wanted to keep the project as personal as possible because the Sylvain was like, um, basically the, the results of me feeling like all the projects I was in up until that point, kind of going in directions I didn't really feel, or like, you know, I didn't feel like it was a place I could put my songs into like my most personal feelings and meanderings and emotions and stuff. So I wanted to keep this project that like, it's a kind of sacred space. And as long as I can, I will try to keep it as, as um kind of 
uh, much of a solo project as possible, just because it, it feels like the expression and the communication is more direct this way. So that's why I decided to try. I wasn't sure I would manage, but then after the first album, I was like, oh, actually, there might be something here. <laughs> so I just kept going in that direction. And so far, so far, so good, I think. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely so far so good. There's a couple of things that you said that are very interesting to me. And is it you said something that a lot of people nowadays do not understand? And is that that the voice is an instrument? People treat voices like it's a game, like let me record this just for the hell of it, put auto-tune, put melodyne, fix it up beautiful, throw out the song, and then when I sing in person, everybody's like what happened? So I, I'm glad that you said that because a lot of people, especially where I live here in Puerto Rico, they do not understand that the voice is an instrument. There's something else that you said that was very interesting. And is that, that you said that when you were younger, you used to sing and recess for the other kids. I used to do that too, but I used yeah. to be, I used to be forced to do it. My cousin, Lenaidi, she was like, he can sing. Let's, let's do like something. So I would do Elvis Presley. I would do the Backstreet Boys. I would do all these things. And at one point, same thing happened to me. And I started to like not feel comfortable with myself. I felt like my voice was weird. And I sometimes I started to quit doing music because I just felt like people did it just to mock me. So I, oh. I felt that concept too. So I, I, I feel where you're going with that. Yeah. Yeah. I guess also part of growing up is like at some point you hit that like moment when you really start to become self-conscious of yourself compared to others. And maybe that's also when those kind of things kick in a bit more. So unfortunately, <laughs> but yeah. So part of life. So you did say something and it it's something that made sense. If you're going to do this live in front of an audience, it's kind of impossible for you to, to play everything at the same time, right? Unless you can use your feet for the piano one hand for the bass, one for the guitar, which you'd have to be an alien. Um, it's, it's impossible. So it's obvious that you brought these these two uh, male uh, musicians to help you out in the in the concerts. And and so far, so good. It's it sound almost identical to the album, which is amazing. Yeah, I have I have three guys with me uh, uh, on stage and basically they're wonderful. They're super respectful. Um, I knew when I going into this that it would be difficult to find people that would want to jump on board with that because it's not exactly if it's the most attractive situation, if we're being honest. You're asked to play some other person's music. Yeah. You have parts that are written out for you and you can't really like just completely go crazy with your own vision. Doesn't sound super great for a lot of musicians, but my three guys that I have, uh, they of course, they brought their flair and their you know emotion into what I'm doing, but they're also very respectful and they're very clear that like we we are the vessels of your vision, which is just like it might it blows my mind when they say stuff like that. Like we've had many conversations like that where they're like, Yeah, we trust you and we trust your vision. We're here to serve you and they serve the music. I'm just like, how did how did I get that lucky to meet people that are first and foremost, fantastic human beings. And second of all, they have like um, a, a wonderful musicality and they're really good musicians too. So yeah, uh, I couldn't do the band situation live without them. And uh, there's not a single day that goes by that I you know, don't feel grateful. <laughs> I always get confused saying that. There's a, not a single day that goes by that I don't feel grateful, yes, for the fact that these people are with me and I get to do this journey with them because it's like, yeah, they're really like my family at this point and uh, I appreciate them so very much. So mm. that's important. So I'm going to get ahead of myself. We're not going to talk about this per se right now, but the next albums that you're working on, which we'll get to later, are they included or are you just doing everything on your own? Like you usually do. Um, well, you know, my, my live drummer, Dorian, he was actually playing drums on Nova, my, my, my fourth album, like the last album I re um, released. So he was already included in that one. And I, I already talked to him about doing the next one as well. So I think if nothing, I mean, if nothing changes drastically, that that will be the case that he will be involved for the, the sixth record as well. Um, the fifth album, sorry, the se yeah, the seventh release. <laughs> you're in the, you're, she's, she's in the future already. She already knows what she's going to do exactly, in like a couple of years. Seventh, eighth, the ninth record. <laughs> uh, the other guys, I don't know. It's like it's it's yeah, you know, it's a, also a, the matter of like getting used to the idea of again, like letting go of a little part of the music, which I talked about it with with them actually, and 
they of course they want to be involved with the creative process too but they still are very like respectful and stuff and they're like you could even write the parts but we could like play them so we're still a part of it you know like <laughs> so i don't know we'll have to see like yeah, right now i'm not quite sure like what it looks like the next record i have lots of ideas i've recorded some stuff but not uh, nowhere near done yet so i have to kind of figure out what it is first and see where where to take it from there and who to involve basically so everybody's hearing that's why she said the six or seven and eight. She already has everything planned out. So <laughs> we're already in the future. We 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 like to say in Puerto Rico, exclusivo. We have the exclusive. We're already ahead in time. So uh Catherine, what inspires you to create such beautiful music? And does is there any spiritual interpretation that goes into any of the songs? Absolutely. Um, I think spirituality is probably the main pillar <laughs> in Sylvain as a project. And I think because this is the subject matter it's also reason why i found it to be kind of i don't know it felt like a bit weird to put this into other projects where there was other people involved and like you know have them trying to communicate this vision that's quite specific and i'm aware of that it's not something that everyone believes in or everyone sees or wants to hear about even <laughs> so that's why also sylvain became like the perfect home for my my thoughts and my emotions, my struggles with this kind of spiritual severance that I'm trying to communicate with this project. And it's like back in 2013, when I started making my first album, I couldn't articulate 100% what it was that I was feeling or how it was, how I saw things when it came to spirituality. But through the years, through the, yeah, the, the 11 years that I've been doing this project now, God, I'm getting old. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so Time is relative. Time is relative. Don't forget. Don't forget there you that. There you go. There you go. Nice save. Um, basically, I've uh, got to know myself on a much deeper level and also got to know that part of me. Like, I've always been into, like, things that are not really, let's say, uh, I mean, as much as I love the mundane and I find lots of beauty in the mundane and the everyday life as well, I've always been into, like, you know, things that are more on the spiritual side, more on the occult side, like fantasy, that kind of stuff. Th things that not you know, don't belong to here, so to speak. The normal stuff. Yeah, exactly, I guess. Um, and as the years have gone by, I kind of start to see why I think it's like that. And Sylvain is a project where I try to explore this. And I I find it so weird and difficult to talk about, actually, which is why I try to make music about it to avoid that. But then I have to write lyrics and then people ask me about it afterwards. So... Um, Basically, I do talk about it quite a bit, but I just like it's a subject that can be kind of tricky to talk about. And sometimes people get, um, how can I say that's uncomfortable or like it can sound weird. It can sound yeah. a bit crazy. It can sound pretentious, but it's not meant to be any of those things. It's just something that I believe myself and I'm not trying to preach anything. I'm just kind of like, you know, it's uh, Sylvain is an audio diary, you know, where I kind of deal and like process my emotions and release things or like try to release things, try to figure out stuff. And the spirituality is a big part of all of that. And, uh, you know, having this feeling of not belonging to here, not being from this space um, and uh, trying to, convey the, the difficulties I feel with that, like as a being trapped in a human body, trapped on this planet, even though I also at the same time believe that that's a gift and we're sent here to learn and to experience life. Exactly. We don't actually belong here. That's what I feel anyways. And that therefore it can cause these kind of like disconnects and these like feelings of longing, but for you don't know exactly what, or you don't know, you're longing for a home that you never saw. Like, exactly. I, I mean, you have seen, but you don't know what you your sense Mm -hmm. or you don't remember maybe so yeah it's um it's a subject that can be really tricky to talk about but that's basically the main pillar of sylvain more or less i mean it's something that's in every single release that i've, I've had this there's, there's always that in there mixed with other things like uh when my third album i was very inspired by the outside world and how i was just like looking at stuff and going oh my goodness how can humans be so cruel to each mm -hmm. other Sadly. so heartbreaking and it just feels like it's hopeless i know it's not but it feels so overwhelming uh nova my last record was inspired by by loss that was my personal loss but then the whole world went through covid and i went through covid at the same time as i was making this record about my personal loss so i mean there's other elements in there but the spiritual side is definitely a main pillar in the projects and as far as i can see it it will be as well for times to come that's nice. I'm very spiritual myself. That's why I asked the question because I've, I've been hearing your music for quite a while. And every time I hear it, I can just like, I just can like close my eyes and centralize and I can feel like you're just running through the universe, right? 
You're just bouncing between the stars and all that and, and trying to find a, a reason of, of why why do we exist in this plane, right? It's like you said, it's a, we're, it's a blessing. Uh, we were one in between a thousand of these beings that were allowed to be a part of this world and we are here all to, to learn. Sadly, a lot of beings are not here to learn. I A month ago, I had an experience that I was going to go interview some, some people and I'm driving to the venue and right in front of me, this dude sees his cat walking and he accelerates, knocked the cat, it, the cat tumbled. I stopped the car. I picked up the cat. I invested God knows how much money to save his life. And I I see that like, if we're here, it's to, to take care of, of, of earth, to take care of Gaia, to take care of his creatures, to take care of one another, to experiment why are we in this plane and some people tend to confuse the spiritual with the religious and they're not at all the same so when no. you say spirituality it really shouldn't bother anybody because spirituality is is you trying to find your way religion is following other people's predicaments or or whatever they believe in and religion tends to separate people i feel that spirituality does not it tends to unite people so i i totally understand what you're trying to say yeah i couldn't agree more like uh I, i'm uh basically uh really not the biggest fan of organized religion i absolutely don't judge people that uh, follow this or that believe in this and i respect them for that like that's uh religion isn't an issue for me when it stays like a personal matter exactly. when you start mixing it into like politics or like a way that a government is run or stuff like that then it becomes a big like red flag for me and as you said it's been throughout history we've seen like umpteen times where it's been used to separate people and to create like us and them and we know that us and them is so dangerous and it's so toxic it only leads to suffering uh amongst humans and as you said, I find that spirituality has nothing to do with religion. It's nothing for me. Uh, uh, religion sometimes can be like very lacking of any kind of spirituality, which is kind yeah, of totally, weird. totally. Uh, but as you said, like I feel like because uh, in a lot of spiritual practices, the, of course, again, there's like uh, very individual styles of that as well. It's about like being one and like you know uniting and like you know that kind of thing which is uh, much more in line with what i personally believe in as well and feel like should be the way to go for humanity so yeah i agree we 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 think alike in, in, in a certain degree that's why that's is why i wanted to interview you because i just wanted the people to know because listening to music I, i'm a i'm a singer as well listening to music when i hear and then obviously you, you do songs in a certain language that I don't speak, so I, I look for a translator. And when I read it, I'm like, yo, this this has to be, this has to become literature. That has to be written down so people can read it, you know, like a book in some moment. So people can just sit down and, and, and really listen to what you're trying to say. Thank you. That's, that's very cool. <laughs> I already gave you an idea. When you retire, turn everything into a book. It'll, it'll sell like okay. hotcakes. Still thinking about the future. <laughs> Time there is relative. Go. Whenever you, when, when you, yeah. when you less expect it, it's you're already in that moment where you're like, well, let me do this book. I have a question from a fan. It's a, it's a very funny, silly question, but I ask fans for questions. So William Nunez asks, if by chance are you related or are you a relative of the actress named Anna Taylor Joy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's um. First of all, I'm gonna say that's. I'm taking that as a big compliment because I find Anna Taylor Joy to be first and foremost extremely talented. Like I really enjoy her her performances in several different movies and series. Second of all, I'll take it as a compliment because I think she's uh, ethereal, gorgeous. She's beautiful, like just visually speaking. And um, no, I'm definitely not. <laughs> But I have to say, this is really not the first time I have that kind of comparison or question, which I'm not, I'm like, how is that possible? <laughs> but, you know, I will take it. So, yeah, thank you. But no, unfortunately not. <laughs> uh, you, we probably don't know, right? Probably if you took the, the, the gene tree and keep going up, 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 there's some, some point there's a cross. Because like <laughs> if, if, it's not the, if it's not the first time it's been sent, there's got to be something there. It's been happening quite a bit. Like the last few years, I've heard a lot. So I'm like, 
but yeah again i don't uh, again i think she's like absolutely gorgeous so yeah that's very nice and in every way like in her in her personality the way that she portrays herself her actual talents her of course her her looks yeah so thank you but no <laughs> well i believe the same thing he he says you are super talented super beautiful super everything in particular so i believe that there could be some similarity we'll we'll, we'll have Probably in the future, you'll tell us, hey, yeah, I checked out the gene tree and we do interconnect in, in the 12th century and some point where our grand, grand grandparents were. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Have to look into that too. That's another plan for the future. To go down the family tree. There we go. There we, there we go. More future plans than everybody's finding out right now in the past. So, <laughs> yes, Javi. So, Catherine, you're so talented and so special. And in 2019, you became the first female to earn a nomination for Best Metal Album at the Norwegian Grammy Awards. When you found out about that uh, uh, that nomination, what kind of emotions passed through your heart and your soul? Well, coming from a place of being very lacking in self-confidence with music, uh, as I told you, that period of like being terrified of hearing my own voice lasted for a while. And then I got into the music high school uh, and I remember that I totally fell in love with performing there again, but it was still terrified me. And I still had like a, a long battle of believing that I had the right to try to take people's time with my songs, with my voice, with my whatever, with my music. Um, so when I started uh, Sylvain and I actually released my first album completely unknown and people started like listening to it and I got some like reviews for it. It was already for me completely surreal. And it's like, uh, I was extremely grateful that I um, that people would actually take the time to, to try to listen to my story. So further uh, along the line, further down the line with the nomination for the Norwegian Grammy, um, it was completely surreal. Like a part of me has always thought that giving awards for something as abstract as art, even writing reviews is a little bit redundant, a little bit weird, because yeah. art is so subjective that you can't say, this is the best album of the year. For me, it's a bit like, uh, yeah, for you maybe, but and maybe like, you know, 3,000 others, but what about the rest of the millions of people around the world? Exactly. So I always found it a bit like weird and like how much merit and how much importance does those kind of things have? I don't think they have that much importance, but I will say... um. What I realized then is that now I could potentially be some kind of role model for younger females, people that identify as female, to show them that you can fit into a scene where it's not exactly, you know, heavily uh, dominated by female presence. And that, you know, if you also feel kind of at home in a in a darker, more or less say kind of sad, whatever expression, harsher expression at times, that's okay. And it's it's really cool. Like you can do that too. Because growing up, I didn't have like a whole lot of um, like role models in this kind of heavier music, That's true. Uh, metal music, black metal, whatever, this kind of st stuff. And to be, I mean, I'm not saying that I am, but to potentially could be that for someone, it, that means a lot. And to potentially be a part of like starting to balance out and uh, complete like difference between men and women in a genre. That's also very, very cool. So of course the nomination was very, very cool and I really appreciate it. And I thanked like the Academy a lot for, for choosing um, Adam's line coming on none for that. And then also Nova later on for that as well. Uh, but at the same time, the coolest part was probably the fact of maybe opening doors for like young girls out there or like, you know, opening doors for other female artists coming after me to maybe potentially one day actually win the award. But that still hasn't happened yet. So, so yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. And also a little bit like you, you still go, but is it really important? To the <laughs> but it kind of is. So it's like, you know, it's, but yeah, I was still very grateful for it. So, yeah. It is important in the remark, like you were saying that this can inspire other females that want to be in, 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 in black metal or in post metal to, to try it, to not be like, yo, this is a genre that's heavily inscribed by just male artists. If, if Catherine, if if Sylvine could do it, then I can do it too. So yeah, you you probably don't see you as a role model in these moments, but you will see with time those young kids that that in the 2019 when they first saw you get nominated, be like, hey, you know, I admire what she does. I want to do the same thing, and I want to win it. And they'll probably push themselves to the point of winning it. So 
nominations are like you say they're all opinions reviews are all opinions you know i never take reviews like the it factor like reviews is okay this person heard this album and in that particular day and moment he was in a good mood so he's like oh yeah but uh, what about if that day in particular he was listening to for example uh, nova and he wasn't in like in the spirituality mood and he just wanted to hear a, a bunch of people just going dang, 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 and screaming yeah. for no reason and he's like i don't like the album so it's all opinions that's it I, I'm, I'm not trying to like uh I'm not trying to like devaluize people that do this for a living or like people that re review records because of course uh, it's always interesting to hear like in-depth thoughts about what you've been doing and like for other people also to like maybe relate to it a bit easier without listening to the whole thing so i'm not saying that it's a bad thing at all i just like i always sometimes you know you take a step back and you try to like see it from the outside and you're bit this is a little bit bizarre <laughs> but <laughs> and it's the same with awards but at the same time you know it's not like they have no value at all it's just uh it's good to be conscious about it that's all i guess exactly yeah because like we're saying they're they're all opinions Opinions do matter, right? Because yeah. opinions, as long as it's as long as it's constructive criticism, it can help you grow as an artist and as a person. Now, if it's criticism just to criticize, then right there is why I have the issue. Yeah, of course, I totally agree. Like criticism because of jealousy or because of trying to tear someone down, which unfortunately happens far too much within even like between artistic people and artistic community. That's not cool. It never. It's like hard enough to do art for a living or to do it in general. We don't have to like tear each other down, you know. So, uh, but yeah, everyone's entitled to opinion, and it's interesting to to see what people think. But uh, just like remember what it is. Like take it for what it is. Like don't put too much value into it. I guess. So, I, I always yeah. say, there's a reason why people do promotional songs, right? Listen to the promotional song. And use that as like your gauge to let me invest in the album or I didn't like the song and if the rest of the, the CD is like this and I'm not going to listen to it. Always mm -hmm. ferment your own opinions. That's only something that, I, that I've always said. And um, yeah, um, opinions matter, but we always have to have our own opinions. So now we're going to the present, right? Where we were in the past, we we're in the future, now we're in the present. Um, I'm going to try to say the name without butching it. Ik, ah. er, ik er ermand. Did I say it right? Ik er framand. Ah, ik... Almost! Ik, ik er framand. Ah, ah, okay. Yeah! Ah, exactly. okay. Perfect. Good job. Ah, I, I, I always thought that the, the F... Sometimes the F looks like an E, so I, I always... So ah, yeah. yeah, sure. Ik yeah. Er framand. Uh, it releases... Uh, supposed to release March 22, 2024. It has six songs. What was the inspiration for this album and for these songs? And especially for the 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 clothes that you used for the photoshop for the photo shoot i i looked at the photos and i was like this reminds me of the queen from the lord of the rings you know like the uh, steven tyler's daughter and she was like this clothes reminds me and that flow so where did all this come from so um this ep because even if it's it's basically almost an album because it's like a few sh minutes shy of being an actual album and actually it was supposed to there it was a few more tracks that I wanted to record for this but then I kind of when I was done with the six that I had now I was like no actually I think this is the, what it needs to be and then the other ones I will have for something else later on uh, so it stayed an EP but it's a long EP and uh, it's basically dedicated to Norwegian folk music so my my heritage within the music culture here in Norway because uh, we have a quite rich tradition of that. And it's not just, you know, music was used for entertainment, of course, um, but it was also used, like literally used, it had a purpose. Like, you know, you would use it to call other people, like, you know, over the mountain, because <laughs> Norway is a huge country, but not yeah. a lot of people live here because a lot of the environment is really hostile mm -hmm. and like hard to live in. So, you know, sometimes you would have people that live like super far away from each other and they would communicate with like different callings and songs They would communicate with animals to bring them back home from the fields, stuff like that. So it's nice. been like um, kind of, yeah, like, uh, you know, songs that were used with a purpose and also entertainments. And I've always liked this tradition in Norway. It, it has a very specific like melodic quality to it. I've grown up with it. If you have lived in Norway and you've been into music, you have heard this kind of music since you were a kid. And um I've always been told, actually, since I was a kid, too, that, yeah, your voice would lend itself to that. But I wasn't really, like, diving into it fully because I was like, I'm not sure that's my home. Like, I want to go there and that's where I want to stay. But through the years, I've kind of experimented a little bit here and there. And I kind of, like, took some things from, like, stylistic things that I liked and I put it into kind of be my style now. 
that uh, when I listen to it, back to it, I'm like, hmm, I can hear that this like phrasing or that trill sounds like very folk music style. Um, but I have been wanting to actually dive deeper into it for years now. And uh, it's just, just never been the time. I was like, yeah, maybe not now. Uh, maybe not now. And then I was uh, kind of slapped in the face with the, with the, um, with the title track of this EP, Ega Framand. I saw it on TV. Like it was a random like Norwegian artist performing it. Oh. And it was just like, uh, I remember that moment. I like, it just gives me goosebumps to think, just even to think about it. Because I think it's like one of those moments that I'll only experience like very few times in my life where a musical piece, I hear it. And from the beginning, I was like, it what just you. happened? Oh my God, what is this piece? So I knew at the moment that I heard this performed by by this Norwegian artist, I was like, I need to do something with this because the melody just like speaks to my soul, and I can't exp I can't explain exactly why. Then I started to look into the lyrics, and I'm like, oh, that's why. It's a religious song, but if you take out the the, the Jesus, the you take out yeah. the God, you have you're left with the same exact thing that I'm talking about in Sylvain, just in a religious context. So when I recorded this myself, I actually rewrote the lyrics to take out the kind of like the religious, the Christian exactly. content because yeah. I didn't want to disrespect people that do believe in this because mm -hmm. I don't. And I spent quite a lot of time in my life uh, saying that I'm against the church here in Norway. We had a state church for a long time and it took me like a year and a half to not become a member of that anymore because you automatically become a member when you're born here. So you fought for it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I really, I did. I, I fought for it because I'm like, I can't stand for what a lot of you things that you guys believe in. And I just can't do that. It's not uh, right. So I rewrote the lyrics because I didn't find it to be respectful to, to sing God or to sing Jesus when I do not believe in that. And that's not the message I want to, to communicate either. So, but anyways, the content of it was so uh, incredible. So I started performing this track every now and then when I felt like the, the the ambience was right and I had like the right emotion on tour for the next few years it wasn't like every time we play but it was sometimes I was like mm, I can feel it like it's right and uh, my label like several different people from my label Season the Mist actually saw that live at, on different occasions and they all said the same thing none of them know Norwegian none of them understand the lyrics at all they all said the same thing this is really special we have to do something with this and um I was fighting kind of the idea of like recording it because I wanted, I was wondering, should it not just be like an ephemeral thing that kind of lives here in the moment and then it's like gone and that's kind of the magic with it too. And I debated for many months, I went back and forth with that. And in the end, I decided that actually, you know what, if I do this in the right way, if I do it in a way that's worthy, um, I think that I can eternalize it and I'll be okay with that, like existing from here on out. So that was the original idea of the EP. It wasn't supposed to be an EP, IP, EP. It was supposed to be just be this track. And then as I was doing that, I was listening to different versions of this track, which there aren't very many. It's not a very famous uh, Norwegian traditional folk music piece. So it's but old. It's, uh, it's, it's a really old one. We don't know exactly the origins. We know the, the lyrics come from the 1800s at some point. There was like a, a, a writer that was also writing a lot of uh, like psalms, you know, like religious stuff that made the lyrics or this version that we have of the lyrics now. Um, so when I was doing research that I also started listening to other folk music and there was like, there was one piece that I've heard my whole life and there's so many recordings of it. I was like, it would be cool to try to do a version of it, but like a, <laughs> a version that nobody has heard of it before, which I think I actually achieved. It's the third track on the EP. And then the first track on the EP is also a traditional Norwegian folk music piece. So there's three pieces on the record that are not written by me. We don't know who wrote them. They're from like many, many years ago, many decades ago, unknown. centuries ago. And um, basically, yeah, unknown origins. Uh, you can trace like kind of where in the country they were from, but nothing more, really more than that. And uh, then there's three pieces that I wrote and composed myself inspired by the Norwegian folk music. So the concept behind this EP was basically paying uh, homage to my heritage there uh, in a musical sense and exploring a little bit deeper in my own way, of course, because I'm, I'm you know, I'm forcibly who I am in speaking. Exactly. In music. So it's still like full of layers and it's quite lush and it's, it goes from being quite lush to being extremely naked. And I love that. I love playing with dynamics. I love playing with opposites. Uh, one of my favorite things to do in music is work with the vocal harmonies and has been present in my music since day one. And this was a chance to go even further with that and do even more like choir stuff, which I know will influence me for the next releases as well. 
Um, so yeah, the idea was basically to do that, to, to explore this kind of new territory that I've been wanted to explore for a long time. And there's several of my pieces that I've recorded before in uh, Sylvain on my records that have influence from this tradition as well. But this time I'm like really going into that uh, genre, into that musical language. And uh, it was really inspiring. And I know that I will keep doing this in the future. I don't know if I will keep like, you know, I don't know in what capacity, but I know for a fact, like even this year, I have a plan to record some of the ones that I wanted to record for this EP, which would have made an album. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens with it. But definitely it's something that's the religious now. They're all religious, the pieces that I recorded. And they, I don't, there's something with them that just like touched me very deeply. So so yeah, that's basically where this EP, the concept came from and why did I make it? And that's how it came to be. That's that's totally interesting. There's something very interesting that the people that live on my side of the world, obviously I live in Puerto Rico, so I'm in the Americas. When you talk about Noregan, uh, we think about like the pagans and, and mm -hmm. all these people before. We mm -hmm. never think about that it's like a Catholic state. I never knew that. That's That to me is something new. Yeah, it's not, it's not Catholic, actually. It's like Protestant. Like, uh, we oh, never had, like, as far as I know, there was never really Catholicism here, which is like the Catholic... Oh, don't get me started on the Catholic Church. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's another interview. That's another interview. So, like, let's keep it nice here. So, uh, no, uh, basically, like, the, the state and the church were not separated up until, like, what was it, 2000 and... I want to say, like, 13, 14. It's not that many years ago. Like, what? it's really... Not that many years ago that uh, it was like separated and there was no longer a state church in Norway. I mean, did it really affect everyday life much? No, of course not. We're not that Christian of a country. But the even the fact that there was a connection was for me kind of fucked up. It was literally called the Norwegian state church. But that was dissolved like uh, not that long ago. And uh, when you're baptized here in Norway, you're like automatically taken in as a member unless you like or, uh, you know, you say that you're a member of some other kind of belief. So I was baptized. And then when I was old enough, when I became a teenager, I was like, oh, no, I don't want to be a part of this. I, I don't agree with so many things. I can't like justify being a part of it. So I spent one and a half year like retracting my membership with the church, sending me letters saying, are you sure about this? But no, I'm, really <laughs> sure. I'm like, yeah, believe me, if I'm going to this trouble, I'm definitely sure. <laughs> so I mean, no disrespect. I recorded the EP in a church because I That's felt interesting. that uh, this was the worthy setting for these pieces. And uh, it's interesting because of my relationship with religion, but at the same time, it was like, this is the right room for it. And it, it has like, you know, I want it to be organic. I want it to be worthy. I want it to have like a natural- Echo character. and stuff. A natural reverb, exactly. And uh, I wanted I wanted this EP to sound, at least in times, like someone was just sitting in this church with me, just like, just the two of us. And I was just singing to them or like playing to them. And keeping it organic, like a lot of the the, the 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 takes, like the vocal takes and stuff on this record is like a one one shot thing, or like with small edits here and there, because I wanted to try to keep it organic. There's no click tracks. There's like it's like really different from what I'm usually doing. So it was very much a concept of keeping it very roots, because I was going back to my musical roots with it. And um, yeah, it's, it, again, it was recorded in the church. So it's not like I hate the church or anything of this of yeah, the kind. Yeah. I love church rooms. It's something I love to enjoy and visit in every time I go to somewhere new. But um, but yeah, definitely um, have a little bit of an issue with organized religion. <laughs> so, One last question based on, on what you're talking about so we can continue. Um, so... If you were born in, in, in that era in particular, it lasted until a couple of years ago. If you decided not to be baptized, were you treated differently in civilization or they just let you be you? I don't like, I don't think so. I don't think it would be that big of a deal. I think like my parents are not religious, really. Like okay. uh, they're not, they weren't brought up in especially religious homes either. Like my grandparents weren't really like very religious or anything. It's just, I think it was just like kind of a societal thing that like you, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to baptize your child and that's it, you know? So, I mean, absolutely don't have any like, you know, harsh feelings towards my parents for doing like, How could you do that? I think it was just <laughs> kind of something you did and they just follow that. And if you didn't do it, I mean, maybe some people be like, oh, that's weird, but I don't think it would be an issue either uh, because I mean, there's no doubt that uh, Norway, Norway has been a Christian country and we definitely have, like you can see things in society now. 
for example, like that everything's closed on Sundays, for example, very like typical example that I use. And that's definitely traced back to Christianity, you know. So definitely. Uh, there's no doubt that you can see traces of it. And um it's 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 still here, but it's not uh, it's hasn't been a very religious country for a long time. And I mean, of course, I come from Oslo, the capital, so obviously I don't see it much. If you live like a bit more rural or in certain certain areas of the country that are known for that, it would be a different story. But being in the capital, it's not been the case. Like I don't think religion hasn't really been, let's say, popular <laughs> for quite some time. I think so. Yeah. Interesting. Well, this is so fascinating to me because, like, I, 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 I'm not rich enough to go to Norway, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling everything you're saying, and I'm learning a little bit about the country, and, and, and right. that, that's amazing. That's amazing. I have uh ascendancy from Geneva and Italy. I've never been to Italy, so I like to hear stories and, and learn a little bit about the old world. So, um, talk about talk us a little about uh about the the tour in Europe that you're doing with Avor. You're going as the solo as who we all know you uh, as and, and without the band. So tell us a little bit about where, where is the tour going to go? Um, what was the concept? Uh, when did Avor get in touch with you and be like, yo, I need you to be a part of this? Tell us a little bit about, about this, this, this joint uh, event you guys are doing. Hmm. Yeah, it's um, basically I was talking to my booking agent, Alex at Doomstar Bookings and letting him know, like for the last few years, actually, I've been telling him that I'm really... I really feel like my soul really wants to to explore this kind of solo version of this uh, project as well, which is funny. Like I like you know Sylvain solos. Like well, Sylvain is solo. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, but uh, when you're in stage, you need other people because yeah, exactly. you can't touch to everything specify. yourself. Yeah, exactly. Without my musical family on stage, just to, to specify, because I had like the chance to do a couple of those shows, and even though it's absolutely terrifying to be alone and to be like it's so personal when you do it like that, and you just like strip it down. It's just something that I feel is like nothing else when it comes to performance. So I did not want to replace this with my band uh, performances at all. I just wanted to kind of complement them because they're two different, very, very different things. So I told him a few years ago that I want to start to try to push this a bit more and um, do small things here and there. And then last year it started to already happen, like a few little things here and there. But I was like, I would really like to go on tour with this, like, you know, like to see, because I don't actually know how people would react to it, except for the few experiences that I've had where uh, like gratefully, uh, I'm very grateful to say that people have been very accepting and very open and very appreciative of that. So um, yeah, this opportunity came into play last year and uh, it was, yeah, they actually chose me, which I was a bit like, what? Excuse me, that's like so cool. <laughs> very, very cool because they enjoyed the they enjoyed the idea of me being uh, alone on stage, and um, reached out and asked if it was something that I would be interested in. I, of course, I I screamed yes, and I never looked back. What are you <laughs> asking about? I've been I've been on you for a couple I'm, of years. I'm on my way. <laughs> like what? Like <laughs> so? Yeah, um, it's gonna be very cool. It's the first time I go out like on a full tour, and it's like a full length tour. It goes all through Europe. Like we start in Germany, I think. We make our way like down through Europe and through like mainland wow. Europe. And then we go up into Scandinavia and we come back to my place, like here in Oslo. We go end up in Stockholm, which is one of my favorite cities. And um, yeah, it's like it's massive. It's a big deal. And it's really uh, I'm so excited. I've already started to prepare some stuff for it and like think about how I'm going to be playing the, the music from the EP live because I obviously want to promote this uh, release and I think that her fans will respond good to this kind of folk music stuff because she also does this kind of like folk exactly. folk kind of mixture of thing. What Actually, that's what I like about her as an artist is she can't really pinpoint exactly what she does because she has like shoegaze influencers. There's pop, <laughs> there's like electronic stuff. There's like, you know, folk music, which is so cool. Like she's not just one thing, which is very cool. So, uh, so yeah, I, of course I said yes. And, um, I'm really excited to, to find how to make like a cohesive set as well between my other stuff, like my regular stuff with Sylvain and the new stuff from the EP that's a bit more specific and to marry them together. And it's, I'm having such a great time, like reworking my songs and making them into this like kind of solo friendly way. And like, with all the layers in my music, it's kind of like kill your darling, darlings. You know, you have to figure out which parts do I actually want to bring with exactly. me. Exactly. Who's play? going to come stay? Exactly. Like, who's going to get to come with me on tour? <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a really cool experience, and I'm so excited. It's it's in October, so it's already like you know, I'll, it's a long time until then. But it feels like it's going to go by tomorrow. real fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's Super tomorrow. Excited. 
be terrified. Exactly. It's tomorrow. Like blink my eyes. Like, oh shit, it's already over. Like, <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm really, really excited. Like uh, Ivo is a great artist and uh, she seems like a very nice person too. So I just have a feeling, I have a really good feeling about this tour and I'm so humbled and grateful to be a part of it. So yeah, can't wait. Amazing. Amazing. That's cool. Yeah. Um, By chance, I, I love the exclusives because this is what I do for a living. By chance, those songs that did you did did not come out and eek it from did you plan on singing any of them there that's a good question depends oh, like um <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> I, haven't thought of it yet. I think um because you know being the support band on the tour i won't have like you know endless amount of time to play uh so i think i'm also going to do something that i don't usually do with the band which is usually we have like like not necessarily one set list but we have like a bit more of a fixed thing sometimes i like to end our uh, sets alone like and i kind of sometimes just on a whim go yeah let's do this song which is like really not me i'm usually the person that plans a lot <laughs> so but this these days i've been pushing myself a bit more to be a bit more spontaneous and try stuff and see what what happens and let, let that be part of the process it's like perfect and being imperfect and i think i'm going to do that on this tour too i think i'm going to like uh, have a bit of like kind of a selection of songs and then I'm going to go okay we have like these options that we can go with and then kind of choose whatever I feel like and maybe I will include some of the new stuff who knows like it will be in a similar relatable style to the EP um, uh, music I think so could make sense we'll see <laughs> already in the future already in the future uh, <laughs> back to the future <laughs> so uh, Catherine Thank you very much for your time. I know I've, I've taken more than the normal, but it's been very interesting. I hope you enjoyed yourself uh, on this evening. I think it is over there, over here. It's still two o'clock in the afternoon. So what is what are your socials? Uh, where can people find you for those that are listening, that are hearing about you for the first time? Well, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me. It was really, really nice to chat to you. And I feel like it went off on a little bit of a religious rant here. But, <laughs> so, there's a lot of stuff to be said about this. And I think we both have a lot of feelings about it. So. Yeah, <laughs> but do. Very cool. Thank you very much for that. I really enjoyed myself. And um, for my socials, I'm spending more time on Instagram than any of my other socials. But I do also have Facebook and threads. And I even did jump on the TikTok <laughs> Oh, I, I'm not good at that yet. I, I'm too much of a millennial, like geriatric millennial, to be good at that yet. But... I'm the same. I'm the same. Yeah, there you My go. TikTok yeah. sucks. I don't understand it, but oh well. I'm like, this doesn't seem healthy. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I'm on TikTok too. So basically, any other socials, uh, you can find me. But Instagram is where I like to kind of actually communicate with fans and like to kind of you know write messages with people because it's so still baffling to me that there's people around the world listening to my story that i feel like the la least i can do as long as i can mm -hmm. i will be talking to people there so so yeah and the socials are i want to hear from you it is sylvain music exactly uh is a basically yeah at Sylvain Music, pretty much, or like Facebook Sylvain Music, they're all, all Sylvain Music. Yeah, Sylvain. That's how you pronounce it. <laughs> exactly. You were so entertained that you said everything except the social name. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that happens. So, that's true. Right, so, so nothing. Uh, thank you, Catherine, for the opportunity. Sylvain. Uh, thank you, Will uh, from Season of Mist. Thank you once again for this opportunity. A todo lo que nos esté viendo en su casa, grab your assassini. Sylvain, hasta las piedras cantan. Así que hasta la próxima. Peace. Gracias. Oh, she surprised me. <laughs> <laughs>
stood.